Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you for those of those of you that are waiting for us to go live to join us uh, for a special treat today. Uh, this is the last episode in our what we're calling our exceptional series. So our Facebook Q and A, uh, we've done now. We've had small business innovators that we've had a privilege of of talking to and featuring and shining a light on the great things that they've done to to really shift and, and adapt to the new normal um, amidst COVID-19. Then we shifted to uh, feature exceptional businesses in our community. So those that, have, that go above and beyond when it comes to customer relations or customer experience, or just uh, they go the extra mile in servicing um, provide, you know, whether it's product quality. So you guys have, those of, that have continued to watch and, and tune in each time you've seen some pretty incredible people and businesses that we've had the, the privilege of shining a light on. And so today, uh, like I said, is the last of our exceptional series, and we're going to shift into another series in the fall. And I won't surprise, I'll surprise you about that at the end. Uh, but all along the way, we have been supported and, um, the Jay Brown team has continued to allow us to do this. Um, and so I want to say thank you to our sponsor um, and recognize Jay Brown Realtors for being um, this founding sponsor of what we call Facebook Live Q&A. So Jay Brown, who has been with us for every single episode, last episode, if you watched, he actually even tuned in from the beach from his family vacation. So Jay is such a community supporter. He is such an advocate for our community. Um, and he is definitely an exceptional business in his own right. So Jay Brown, uh, thanks again. And I want to turn it over to you. Thank you, Lindsay. It's been an honor to be on here and, and talk with you guys and to learn so much about the local people and the businesses that they run. And, and they've all been each just really informative and um, fun to uh, get to know new people and new businesses that maybe some, some of us weren't aware of. So I'm really excited to have John from Treetop Adventures uh, today. I have been to his course. Um, it's pretty awesome that we have that in our county. Um, they do a really cool job up there. I think you guys are going to be super uh, impressed with what, what they do up there. So pay attention to this one. It's going to be a good one. And thank you, Lindsay, for letting me be a part of this and Jay Brown Realtors and our crew. It's been an honor, and I'm sure I will see you guys around town. Thank you, Jay. Uh, you know, some of you all have, you, you all have experienced this, right? This pandemic has created some awareness of things that we could do um, that we wouldn't have even considered prior to March. And this would be an example of that for your chamber. And so like Jay said, I hope that you've been inspired. I hope you've um, had the privilege of meeting virtually people that you in our community, leaders in our community that you would have maybe never cross paths with otherwise. And uh, so we have been proud to provide some great content. Uh, thanks to Jay Brown Realtors and his whole team um, over the past several months with, with these series that we've been bringing to you. And, and like Jay said, uh, this is no exception. So today you are in for a treat because I am so excited to interview John Sagerwald. He's the founder of Treetop Adventures of Lake Hickory, also the director of the North Carolina Boys Academy. Uh, so John, and I want to make sure, there he is. Hey, John, hey thanks, Lindsay. Yes, thanks for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. I uh, appreciate this opportunity to chat with you. It's a, it's a real delight. Thank you for having me. Well, just a little bit about John. And then as we start off all of our interviews, we're going to do a, a rapid fire, get to know John in five minutes or less. But I want to give you a little bit of context of who he is. Uh, John and his wife, Darylin, live in Conover. They've been married for over 35 years and have four adult children. Uh, Bethany, now help me, is it? Jamin. Jamin. And Elizabeth and Jared. Uh, John uh -huh. graduated from Delhi University with an associate's degree in hotel restaurant management. He also holds a bachelor's degree, degree in biblical studies from Tocoa Falls College and a Master's of Leadership from Trinity Western University. He and Darylin started Treetop Adventures of Lake Hickory to provide the area with a fun-filled outdoor experience on, on Lake Hickory. 
It also is, was established as a micro enterprise to help subsidize tuition costs for the North Carolina Boys Academy participants. Adventures also offers weekly summer camps to children ages six through 13. And Treetops really awakens the wonder of the great outdoors to every guest. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what, what wow. a, yes. A little yes. blast from the past there, you know, just going over those, that history of our family and um, wow. Yes, it's a delight to be here with you and so excited to be here in the city of Hickory and, and a part of the great community we have here. So thank you, John. All right, let's dive into this uh, rapid fire Q&A and then okay. um, hopefully we can provide our guests or viewers with some more context um, to our discussion. But for, first, before we go into that rapid fire, I want to encourage everybody to engage with us. So if you are watching us live, now that we've got a couple minutes to, to grow our viewers, um, I want you to throw us a hashtag. So hashtag live, if you're watching us live. If this is the replay, so you've caught this later, you weren't able to watch it live, but you're watching the replay, go ahead and give us a hashtag replay so we know that you stopped in. Um, something else that helps us, uh, go ahead and share the video. So share the video on your personal page or on your business page so that other people can benefit from what John's about to, to share with us. Um, you can also start a watch party. So go ahead and click that start a watch party button. It lets all your friends know that you're watching this interview and you can participate. And anytime throughout this interview, if John says something that just resonates with you, do us a favor and react. So you've got a little the like button, you've got a heart button, you've got a wow face. Give us some of those a wow faces and hearts and likes because that, according to Facebook, really likes it. It'll boost our algorithm so more people can benefit from John's insight. So do that for us, will ya? Thank you so much. Um, we also have the ability to see the comments during the interview. So if you have a question for John, go ahead and throw that into the comments and I'll weave that into our interview. All right, here we go, John. Ready. Okay. So in as few words as possible, what does it mean to be exceptional? Um, uncommon, better, not typical, more than a couple of words that come to mind. Like it. What's one cause that's near and dear to your heart? Kids. Kids that come from under-resourced backgrounds or kids come from maybe a home where there's been substance abuse or something like that. So just creating environments for kids to have fun. What is the most important quality of a strong leader? Integrity. Mm. Integrity. You got to have integrity. I mean, there's so many qualities for leaders, right? Organization, vision. But, you know, integrity, I think, is a bedrock for everything. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Batman. I would I would want Batman, I think. That's who the I would Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah. The dark the city, Gotham City from yeah, yeah. all the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would love do, it. choose. I yeah. love it. My my uh, five year old would appreciate that. Okay. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> who is one leader you admire the most? Um, George Washington. Phenomenal leader, right? Founder of our nation, first president. I mean, I lived in Fredericksburg for a number of years, and that's where uh, George Washington grew up. And um, what's a really interesting piece of history is that during the dark days of the revolution, there's a there's a place his mother would go to called uh, Meditation Rock. And so she would go and pray for her son. And then also, I'm originally from New York. And so he was the only president inaugurated in the federal building. And when you go there, you'll see two pictures of him on the on the plaques there. So phenomenal leader, wise man, very wise man. Love it. What's one of the most random facts about John Staggerwald? I love to cook jerk chicken. I would love, I love to, to benefit cook. from that. Yeah, I love jerk chicken. Yeah, and so any type of food, I love to cook food and, and um, jerk chicken, rice and peas, I mean, things like that. So love to cook. Love it. All right, what was the last book that you read? Um, there's a book I'm reading right now that someone gave to me on resiliency. So um, really good to be resilient. A timely message, huh? Very timely. Very but I think... One of my, my one of my favorite books is Rare Leadership. And I believe you gave a talk on rare leadership to our yes. photographer. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thinking back, right? A while back, what was your very uh -huh. what was your very first job? 
a dishwasher at an Italian restaurant. Uh huh. Yep. And and you'd get you know minimum wage back then. I forget what it was, but um, but the 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 great thing is that they would give you a meal and then you could take a pizza home for your family. So now washing dishes. John, is that what in, eventually inspired your your first degree in hotel and restaurant management? I, I think a little bit, but I had some cousins that were in hotel restaurant management, worked for the Marriott and different and different companies. And so that kind of was inspirational, as well as just being hospitable and loving to cook. So that was a draw for me. Nice. All right. What well, makes you lose track of time? My wife. <laughs> I won't Eddie, tell Eddie. Marilyn you said that. Yeah, my wife, you know, just hanging out with her and going places. I mean, we just love to be together. Uh-huh. That's great. And I, I've seen you guys out there on your pontoon on Lake Hickory. Yeah. yeah well, when did you see it? When we drove by the, those? Yeah, the campground. Uh, yeah. I saw oh. it from the car. I was like, hey. Oh, okay. So, yeah. We hang out up there. That's great. All right. If you could if you could have a 15-minute conversation with anyone, who would it be? Mother Teresa. Yeah, just, I mean, just a, an amazing woman that gave of herself so sacrificially, right? And and just laid it all out there. And her great love for people and her great love for God and just the life that she lived, right? I mean, it was really quite amazing. Love it. If you gave a TED Talk, John, what would the subject be? Probably emotional intelligence and relational intelligence, right? Because I think those are key to effective leadership, you know? So I know it's been done at TED Talk before, some greater minds than me have done it, but that was an opportunity, you know, just talk about again, just try to take a different angle, express it through my voice of what emotional intelligence is all about. Key to leadership. One of our uh, viewers also was a fellow dishwasher for their first job, so. Great, yeah. small beginnings, right? Despise it, don't despise the day of small beginnings. That's right. That's right. If you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? Playing the guitar. I would love to play the guitar. I really would. I've always had a dream to do it. Just ah, getting through the calluses on your fingers and, yeah. you know, but, now, but I would love sing? to pick that. Do you sing, John? Uh, sometimes I think people say I make a joyful noise. That's what <laughs> they say. I like so, it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then finally, describe leadership in one word. I mean, I think you come back to John Maxwell and what he says, right? It's influence. It's utilizing influence to move a group of people towards a certain goal or destination or community, um, really utilizing. And then there's so many other qualities, but influence is really, I think, uh, the key to it. That's great. Hopefully that helps. It does. It does. I hope Good. our viewers, those of you that are watching, uh, go ahead and give John some likes and hearts. And I hope you uh, get to know him a little bit more. This rapid fire, I think, gives you just enough to really just be curious about wanting to get to know John better. Um, so as we transition into our interview, I want to first, I mean, I've had the privilege of experiencing Treetop Adventures. I've also had the privilege of um, hearing the whole story behind the North Carolina Boys Academy. So I'd like for you to touch on both, John, just okay. a little bit of background, um, because I know NC Boys Academy came before the need of a yes. enterprise, yes. Uh, which is Treetop Adventure. So give our viewers just the background and, and, um, and the heart behind both. Sure. Well, well, as you know, um, Lindsay, I've pastored for a number of years and have also worked with another organization called Teen Challenge. And our family served in in Kingston, Jamaica, for a number of years, um, establishing Teen Challenge there. And then we came back to the U.S. and we were just south of D.C. for a number of years, serving in a uh, serving as a pastor, uh, pastor of missions there. And then um, just a real stirring in my heart began to rise for young men. Um, and so uh, we ended up moving down here, found a beautiful, stumbled upon a beautiful campus that was formerly uh, established by Duke Power, then sold to the North Carolina Baptist Convention. And then we showed up and they sold it to us. And so the North Carolina Boys Academy is a boarding school for young men um, that need a mid-course correction in their life. Um, they've been involved in uh, numerous things. Um, and so it's a 15-month program and we do, um, they get their education here, they go to school, and then they their parents come for parent weekend training. Um, 
And then they graduate after about 15 months and head back home or into the service or to college. But we really give them a second start, a second chance or a restart in life. And so that's why we moved down here. And then because of that, we thought, you know what, our academy costs money. And so how can we help families that are under resourced and, you know, the teen challenges around the world um, that are successful have micro enterprises. And so the, the, the vision was to look at our environment and say, okay, what can we do that can be uh, a micro enterprise in this community? And so, I mean, if you've been out here and you've been out here, we're right on the lake and it's magnificent. And so, um, you know, we stumbled again upon the idea of establishing Treetop Adventures, which is an aerial adventure park. So. Well, um, like I said, like, you're right. I've experienced it. We've taken Leadership Catawba out there. Um, yes. class, it's always a hit. Um, so you guys serve individuals, right? That want to come mm -hmm. out there. Yes, you we do. Serve families that want to come yes, in groups. Um, what else? Corporate. Yeah, so what we do, I mean, so the treetops, I, we were down in Florida, my wife and I, uh, in 2016, and we were up in, a, in, in this, uh, going all across the zip line, and I was thinking about how can we have this aerial adventure park, and I'm up there 60 feet in the air, and I thought, wow, our campus is absolutely beautiful. We have just as big a trees as these people do. Let's explore this, and so we explored it, built the course, and so what we have now is individuals come. They can go on the course. We have le different levels of courses that they can go on to explore the treetop uh, challenge, the ultimate challenge. Um, uh, and then we also do team building. Uh, as the Chamber's been here, we, we uh, work with schools. Um, it's been really quite a big hit. That was the, the, the team building was an idea, but it really spun off pretty quickly. And people started calling us and we, we, had, we had our fill last, last year um, with the amount of people that came um, to, to, to for team building. And then we thought, you know, let's offer summer camps. Uh, my wife used to run camps in our backyard in, Spencil, in, in Spotsylvania. It took a little convincing, you know, having five kids in your backyard versus 16. And now this year we've been sold out every week. We have 24 kids. It's not about bigger. We just want to provide a really incredible program for kids. And the comments we're getting from parents is my kid comes home so happy and they fall asleep and they're up early the next morning, can't wait to go back. And so- wow. Can't yeah. So, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's a satisfied customer. So, so we have those camps for kids eight weeks during the summer. Um, the park is not open during those hours, but it opens up in the afternoon and then on weekends it's open too. And so we're already planning for next year. As we talk, there's an obstacle course being built around the perimeter of our campus. Yeah. It's an obstacle course. We're going to have some, some like not Spartan races, but kind of races that are going to include water and land and there's five obstacles the company that we have secured they build these obstacle courses at the military bases around the nation and so we're hopeful to open that up maybe in the fall to try have a trial run but we'll have a race next spring here we think about calling it the mud fun race or something like that and, and so we just want to build a place where the community can come, organizations can come, they can build team skills, they can be, build leadership skills, as well as taking the beauty of Lake Hickory here. This is what I just, I've always admired about you, John. Like, you always think so, your vision is just so mm -hmm. vast, and you think mm -hmm. beyond what presently is. Um, and so to really, and most of our viewers, honestly, I bet you there are viewers on here who have never even knew Treetop Adventures existed on Lake Hickory. Yeah. Never knew yeah. about this hidden gem that we have right in our backyard that brings yeah. visitors from all over the country, definitely all over the region and the state, uh, to have this experience. So um, we're talking about being exceptional here. And that to me is, is a definition of being exceptional. Yeah. What else makes you guys exceptional? I think our staff does. We have an incredible staff. I think they deliver um, customer satisfaction. We get a lot of great comments. We do training with them. We train all our staff every year in uh, providing a, um, to mitigate the risk on the course that, you know, that they know the equipment, they know the course well. And so without the staff, without staff, I mean, you really, I mean, you got to have exceptional staff. And so we get a lot of wonderful comments of how kind and gracious and informative and caring they are. And so I would say that that's a key, a key component of our exception. But, you know, just our location itself is exceptional. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
Lake Hickory is magnificent and we're on the far eastern part of the lake by the dam. Um, and so just just maximizing the beauty around us, the natural environment around us. And and, you know, there's been so much research done about getting people into the great outdoors and how it brings stress levels down. And so, you know, we we really talk about engagement coming out of the passive activities that people are involved in. Right? And there's nothing wrong with them, but the whole idea of engagement. And when you come to the park here, you're definitely engaged in team building, the course, families up there together in the trees. They have a, a viewpoint together they can see out. I mean, it's really a wonderful thing to see them uh, just engage as families and, and friends. So I think that's a really interesting concept that you just hinted on. The fact that like I've read that there are doctors now that will prescribe experiences yep. like this. Um, and I know you guys yep. have been listed. And yes. um, what I see is that Park RX America. So uh, literally, they're prescribing outdoor activity and yes. uh, being outside and doing, um, you know, kind of low impact, but still some some physical, um, some physical activity required for the adventure course. So talk about that. Talk. Yep. More so, so last year, this pediatrician from the community shows up. And he's all excited, all excited about America Parks RX. And, and I'm like, um, and he begins to introduce himself as Dr. Millsaps from the community here. And so he begins to tour our facility here and then explain to us this new website that's being put up and how these pediatricians across the nation are getting together and they're actually prescribing nature to deal with chronic illness and chronic disease. And there's a, there's a ton of research out there that actually demonstrates how walking in the woods, listening to uh, just the sounds in the woods. One of the most favorite times the kids have here at the campus is in the afternoon after lunch. My wife takes them deep into the woods and it's all discovery. And, and they'll sit down and she'll say, okay, just sit down and listen now. Right. And so they'll hear all these things. Their senses get activated, you know, and and um, and so 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 Millsaps, he shows up and he's explaining all this stuff to us. And he puts us on this website called Park 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 Rx America. And um, it's really quite incredible of um, how I, I find it amazing that a pediatrician will prescribe a kid to come to our park right, or come to camp. Right. And, and you know, there's use there's this can be useful. But this thing right here can also take so much time away from us. And I think with young kids today, I think parents are learning more and more and more that, you know what, there's balance with this. And we need to be in activities and have our kids outside engaged in, in really activities as simple as taking a park, taking a walk in the woods. And we have so many parks here in Hickory. I mean, we so many wonderful resources in this community, right? I mean, that you could just spend time together and build relationship. So That's so true, John. You know, that's been one of the, the aspects of this pandemic that I've appreciated the most. My neighborhood, people are outside, right? Yeah. And especially when we were in, you know, complete quarantine stage. Yeah. Um, there was nothing else to do other than get out, take a walk, take your dog for a walk, you know, get, get on a bike. Um, and that's been, you know, say hello to your neighbors, right? And yeah. we all get in our routine and we get busy and we are just passing, just, you know, passing each passing other by. on the street. Um, but people are outside. And so what an interesting concept that now, okay, this has mental health uh, data. Yes and physical health that that backs it up and that doctors are saying all right your prescription for the day is you, you need to you need to get out and enjoy the outdoors um, yes. that's, that's pretty neat pretty neat all right how do you guys measure success obviously i mean success i mean you got to look at your numbers right i mean you got to look at your numbers and you got to make sure that you're hitting your targets there but i mean I, I think of success in, in, in multiple, in multiple ways. Right. So, so, you know, um, to have lots of money is to be rich. Right. But to have physical wellness, mental wellness, to have those sort of things, that's being wealthy. Yeah. Right. And, and I also think I like, I like what, um, uh, 
the coach said about success. He says, you know, success is a peace of mind that comes from a self-satisfaction, knowing that you did your best to become the best you're capable of becoming. Mm. Right. And so the idea of becoming right, doing the very best that you can. So so we here, I mean, that's kind of our, our foundation ha- ha- about success. But success is seeing unresourced kids come to the ca- come here last week and people from our community sponsoring for those kids to be here and hearing the leader say to me, um, we just don't get out to parks. We just don't get our kids swimming. We just don't, you know, and, and being able to expose these kids to this beautiful place here on Lake Hickory. And, and 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 seeing them, you know, um, laugh and swim and have all kinds of wonderful times. And so I think, you know, for success for me is seeing the service that we deliver into someone's life and seeing them like light bulbs go off and seeing them develop and seeing having a mom call us and say, I don't know what you did to my son or my daughter today, but they are so happy and they are sleeping through the night and can't wait to get up and go the next day. So. Um, those are the intangibles. I mean, they're tangible, but they're intangible. Right. You know, yeah. And you have to have profits, right, to keep going on and to continue expanding, right? I right. mean, success is, is 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 also our staff and, and do they love their jobs and do and do they and do they love working here? And so I think we there's areas for us to improve. There's always room for improvement, right? Continuous oh, improvement. Right. Always. So right. Well, I've also experienced that type of success in working with you guys. I've mentioned that we've, for the last two years, we've brought our leadership Catawba class out to Treetop Adventures for our opening retreat. And so this is the first opportunity for the class to get to know one another. They mm-hmm. come with probably nerves, a little apprehension. Uh, mm-hmm. they, don't, they don't know what to expect. And so that brings about a little bit of anxiety uh, but then you automatically see that melt away as soon as mm-hmm. you guys get a hold of them, your team uh, engaging them in activities that help them to get to, to grow comfort with one another. But then you they do the outdoor course, uh, they're up in the trees, and then we have a time at the end where we kind of bring it back to center and we talk about, we debrief from this experience all day, right? And so mm-hmm. as a as a bystander, right, as someone that's standing watching all this happen, um, one could think this is this is a fun activity, right? There's mm-hmm. some, the, I'm glad these people are getting to know one another. But then when they start sharing, yeah, there's tears. Mm-hmm. They the things that they say uh, that they took they're taking away from the experience are well beyond what one could would even think that they could experience and so mm-hmm. um and like i said tears i mean we had we had one individual last year who had a, a they were deathly afraid of heights and yeah. they got to a point in the course where they didn't think that they could go any further and talking about how they mentally and emotionally work through that with the encouragement of your staff, but also of their fellow classmates that they literally yeah. just met like two hours ago. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how they overcame that. And that was a, a pivotal moment in their leadership sure. journey and in their life. And so I know you guys could probably rattle off um, instances like that um, over and over of how, this um, experience, really the success of, of this yes. experience, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about development, right? So we talk about the development of leadership, the development of people. And as you're talking, Lizzie, you actually see development in motion, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you see this person that came here that was, you know, had fears. And because of the support that they had around them, they were able to overcome. And um, I mean, yeah, there, there are many stories like that here. And you see that. And, and you see people that um, um, come out and they, they grow and they develop. And so we're excited that we're here in the community and uh, helping. All right. So as we wrap up this conversation, uh, I want to flip the table on you a little bit. Uh, and oh, no. Yes. And so the last activity we typically do with leadership, your team facilitates, is we talk about it's the scenario of the rose, the bud, and the thorn. Mm-hmm. So your team says, what's a rose name from the day name one rose. So a rose equals represents success. So a success from the day. 
Thorn is a challenge that you experienced but possibly overcame. A bud is potential. Mm -hmm. So when thinking about the pandemic over the last several months and from your vantage point in leading this enterprise, both of these enterprises, what would you say would be your rose, your thorn, and your bud? Because of the COVID incident? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I think a rose that came out of it, we had opportunities to, we also have an Airbnb on our campus. <laughs> so, so, so that was an opportunity for us to kind of redo those rooms. And so that's a real, I mean, that was a real success for us. And now that it's opened up again, people coming in and, and um, so we use it as just for development. Um, you know, I think a, a thorn for us was, was, um, I mean, I mean, I think of, you know, obviously we lost business, you know, we lost business and, and like everyone else did. Um, and then we were so grateful when the governor said camps could be open, right? Because ours is an ideal setting, right? We're outside. Yes. And so people, people, um, uh, you know, we started to, to, um, we were just very, very fortunate to open up again. Um, and, and so as far as a bud is concerned, a bud is a combination, I think, of both the academy and also treetops. So we're in the process right now of developing overnight camps uh, for young men uh, that will kick off sometime probably next year or the year after that. We all got architect drawing up drawings where, you know, they come for a week or two weeks and we take in just the beauty of the uh, around us. Um, and so that's something that's budding for us as far as providing more opportunity for young men um, to come and, and be a part of the adventure here overnight. So, uh, I mean, those are just a few thoughts. Always thinking, always yep. listening, always yep. pushing the limit. You guys have truly created um, a whole suite. So from Airbnbs to Aerial Adventure Course with 50 plus platforms, right? Uh, through yes. the trees, a zip line over Lake Hickory. Uh, now you have a warrior course that yes. you have low ropes, low obstacle uh, activities. Uh summer camps yes. and now potentially some overnight camps coming on the horizon. You guys um, are, are truly exceptional. So. Yeah, well, you know, we're just delighted to be here in the community and delighted to serve. And, and so thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. John, thank you so much for the interview. And, um, and truly it is a privilege to know you. I thank you for your passion for the community, your passion for leadership and for always welcoming our leadership Catawba class. Thanks for being a partner of the chamber as well and continuing to invest in, in the mission of business across the community. So delighted, um, delighted, delighted. Thank you again. All right, you guys. Well, this, this is it. Uh, we are concluding our exceptional series uh, with this segment. Um, as I mentioned before at the beginning, if you were here, uh, we are proud to kick off our next series. It's going to be the Family Strong series. So we're going to get to feature businesses that have stood the test of time over generations through innovation and uh, bringing about uh, new products and services that have changed and adapted over, over time to meet the needs of, of the community. And also succession planning. You're gonna see multiple generations of, of family leaders that have stepped up and that not only continue to, to, pro, to provide great services, but they continue to give back. And I'm um, so excited about that. You'll hear more uh, in the coming weeks of who we're going to get to feature, but we're very, very thrilled to bring that to you. Um, but I want to thank you to the viewers that have continued to, to tune in. I want to thank you to all of our guests that we've had uh, during the exceptional series, including John today. I want to also thank, again, J. Brown Realtors for continuing to be our sponsor and to make this happen. So um, with that being said, we're going to sign off.